Hello everybody, Togal here and welcome to a little bit of a different episode today instead of my regular let's play series I wanted to make a little bit of a tutorial on a hover vessel drill ship That I came up with after testing many other blueprints from the workshop And I never found one that really was as stable as I wanted it to be so I built many, many different designs um, in, in a different world. And then I came and made a new world because the other one was such a mess um, and started fresh at making one that I came up with that I think works very well. The criteria I wanted is I wanted it to be compact. I didn't want it to be a big one. I wanted it to be inexpensive. And of course, a very good drill ship that does not bounce around in the different holes that you're going to dig with it. That was my biggest problem that you know the constant tilting left and right and so on um, and I wanted it to be able to go up and down very easily so there is two things that I figured out that are for a drill ship um, to make it better and that is the 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 setup of the hover engines and of course uh, the drills and I did a lot of different tests like I said and I'm gonna try to mention a few that failed and why they failed Number one is this is the, the basic footprint of the of the design that I came up with that I like a lot. This is a very basic hover. It only has four thrusters, just so one RCS just so I was able to move it around here on this platform, a generator, a fuel tank, and a cockpit. It has three uh, ballast blocks in the front and in the back so I can demonstrate something. So let me just show you guys here before we go. And that is um, the key, I think, to a drill hover is that these hovers right here are in a very narrow lineup, okay? Um, I have always in the past, like if you make a, a rover or something that runs on the surface, it's good to have these hover um, engines spread out to the furthest corners of the ship. So when you get to a hill or something, and let's say you with the front right edge, you get there first, it knows, hey, I, I got to adjust, you know, it's going to go higher. So it can go up the mountains very easily. Well, on a drill ship, you don't want that. You want them to be very narrow because when you drill, right, in the front here, um, you're shaving everything down here somewhat equal in the middle, right? If you if you think that the relation from this vessel to this drill, uh, sorry, this engine to this drill and this engine to this drill, they're probably always going to have the same height. So you don't have that tipping to the left and to the right. So that is the first key that I found out that it's really important to make these as close together. You could put a third one here, but like I said, I also wanted to make sure it's not too expensive and six of them work really well. Um, I have not had any problems with that. It works exactly what I wanted. And also the other thing is you want to separate them. Okay. I set up here. Let me show you three groups, front, middle, and rear. And that's on the devices, the two front, the two middle, and the two in the rear. So what you can do now is, and I can only show that when I'm actually in the seat because it doesn't work without it. Let's go ahead and go in the third person and come to the side here. Yeah, let's here. And now with this ballast, and it's not going to be a big difference right away, but it, you can see it. The heavier the ship gets, the better. If I want to drill down, I can simply turn off the front engine. You guys see it automatically tilts. All right, and then, of course, it even goes better if I angle the ship down. Look how easily it, it goes down, right? So that is that is one of the keys. And then, of course, you can turn it back off. And if you want to dig towards the top of a deposit or something, you simply turn off the rear. And it automatically angles up. And, of course, you can also tilt it very easy this way, okay? And this is one of the things that I have not seen anybody else do. And I... I don't know why I'm what made you try it and I'm like you know what I'm gonna try this what happens to a hover vessel when you actually turn them off and I was surprised that this works so that is the second key number one is keep them narrow together so they are kind of always pushing off the same surface so you don't constantly tilt the ship left and right okay um, and separating them so you can turn them on and off so then I took this design and kind of packed it full with stuff as you guys can see all the steel blocks are gone. I put a bunch of RCSs, two fuel tanks, two generators, four forward facing thrusters, three left, three right, and two um, backwards facing, so forward thrust. 
Now, right here in this design, you guys see I actually added a third one. Because I had a two uh, block gap here that I didn't know what to put. I didn't want to leave it empty, so I just gave it more forward thrust. Which is always good to have, okay? So right here, you guys see nothing, nothing to it. Very simple. And then I went into the cockpit design. Um, I'm having FPS lag right now. Feels like a little stuttery. I hope it's not too bad. But I wanted to have a small footprint cockpit. Now, I could have gone with an open cockpit and make use of the new ventilators. But actually, that you, you cannot build them as compact as you think you can. Okay? And I wanted to have the environmental protection and also the oxygen from a cockpit. That's why I went with a single-seater cockpit, just like, you know, you put an SV or anywhere. And this is the regular footprint here of the default cockpit. And you guys see it's huge. So it would make this whole thing even taller. Um, I didn't want to go with one of these long ones because, well, that makes the ship super long, right? Um, this one here is uh, the nicest looking one because you have the, you can see the most. But again, it is much taller. This is a 3x3x4. Three by three by while this design here, this is the one I like the best, is a 3x4x2. You guys see, this is the smallest cockpit you can make. I don't think there's a smaller one. This one is longer, this is by 5, and so on. So yeah, this is the one I decided with. I don't care that much for looks, I wanted this to be very practical, right? And it works great. Alright, and then of course I put all the, the necessary things. I always like to have an O2 station, because if you mine on the moon or something, or a hostile planet without oxygen, you know, you can get some. Sometimes you need to come out of the cockpit for whatever reason. It has a fridge, it has two O2 tanks, it has a constructor... The harvester box and two cargo boxes in case you're looting a point of interest. So you got a little bit of storage with you, right? I don't see any reason to have more than one of these. Because if you fill this with ore, then you need to go back and start processing it. Okay? <laughs> so I think this is everything you need on an HV. And then we go to the drill setup. Now this is the, the, the third big key to... An HV I learned, and it's best demonstrated that, oops, I gotta hold this down. When I turn on show center of mass and get in the cockpit, and let's go into the overview. All right, you guys see right here is the center of mass, that, that yellow ball. I'm actually not sure what that mint color ball is. Maybe that's where the most weight is because of the cockpit? That's possible. But anyway... Remember this here, it's just behind the cockpit, one block down, right? And this is kind of what you want to make sure you have your drills right here. As close to the center of mass of the ship as you can bring them and still be able to drill. Now, I might have been able to put them one further back, but then it, it would have been so close right here that if I would have put any decoration, I am not sure if the ship actually can still drill without... You know any problems and i also learned that uh, you should keep these drills as close to the cockpit underneath and above as possible um this six drill layout right here i tried a four drill layout an eight drill layout but this six drill layout here works the best for me with this distance right here so there's two blocks then three from the cockpit and another two and when i drill with this straight into a mountain i can turn this entire ship around on the spot it digs wide enough because don't forget it doesn't just drill here it also shave off all the way to over here so this is a very wide hole it digs and you can easily on the spot turn the ship around and drive it back out that was one of the other things that was important to me so um this is the drill layout that i have it works really really well um so far and this right here is all you need okay now, of course, nobody wants to drive around with this thing, because as soon as you get shot with one drone one time, you're going to lose some stuff. You're going to have a bad time. So I did then go ahead and decorate it a little bit. Um, Try to use as little materials as possible to keep it light. Okay, this is all just regular steel and not hardened and so on. You can reach every one of these uh, blocks and plates. So you could upgrade it to hardened uh, steel if you play on a PvP server or something. And there's also room up here for guns. Can see over there i left enough room that you can also put the drill turret now these two designs right here i'm going to upload to the workshop this is going to be 
the the regular GCO bore, and this is one of the called the GCO bore plus. That is the only difference is that it has that gun, the turret up there already, the drill turret. Okay, so if you are still early early game, you probably can't make this yet because of the level. I think the ship's gonna be level. Uh, can I see this? I think you can in the blueprint, right? Uh, let's go to HV, GCO bore. Yeah, unlock level 10, and then the bore plus is unlock level 15. Okay, and let me just show you the materials. That is all that it costs. Um, what's the Sathium for? Oh, I think the Sathium is for these guys right here. These shutters, maybe? I don't really know. What is the Sathium? I am not sure. Uh, let's check here real quick. H. I don't think it shows you what costs are. No. I I am not sure what the Sathium is for. I'm going to have to look into that. And if I find out that it's something that we don't need, I'm going to take that part out. Um, it's definitely not the cargo boxes. It's not the fridge. It's not the O2 station. I don't think that the harvester box you know what let's let's check real quick together i think that is fine i just want to find out what it is so i might not change it but you can then um yeah let's put that on advanced constructor right here this is how i always find out when there's something missing so let's go devices hv only where is the um harvester Oh, I gotta, I gotta unlock stuff. I, I haven't done that in this world, of course. I don't think I can do that, right? But apparently I have. Oh, it's because it's a creative world. Never mind. Maybe we can find it out right here what costs the Sathium. Let's, let's find out real quick. And that would be the drill right here requires no Sathium. Harvest box, drill device, no. Okay, so what are the, maybe the shutters? I don't even think they are. Cables control devices, no. There's no ramp blocks. I am not sure what costs the Sathium, guys. Spotlight, no. Would it be... Uh... All right, I finally figured out what costs the Sathium. It's these these uh, shutter blocks right here. So I am going to replace them because I don't want anybody to have to have Sathium to build this. We're going to remove these. And we are going to put um, these guys right there. Just so there's something in front of them. And make it like this. And it's still, it doesn't really matter. They have no purpose besides, you know, blocking this off a little bit. And I'm going to have this version right here that's going to be the regular one. Uh, which color did I use? This one, I think. Yes. Um, I'm going to have this version uploaded. And then the plus version that is going to have the shutters plus the, um, the turret. So if you guys don't want the turret, make this one. And this one does not require... Let's just double check real quick. Um, oh. Oh, sir, come on. Do your thing. So this is the GCO bore. Overwrite. And now if we check in the blueprints, the GCO bore. Now it doesn't take any safety. Okay. So this is the cost. It's very cheap. You can get this easily by just breaking boulders with your tier 1 drill. And then once you're at level 10, you can make that. Take 33 minutes to build and... Um, let's also show this for a second. I know some people care about the statistics right here. So you guys can see all the power and so on. All right. Take a screenshot or pause the video if you want to look into this. And that's it. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take this one out for a spin real quick. I'm actually going to leave it here in case I need to re-record. And I'm simply going to spawn a new one. And this time we're just going to take the bore. We're not going to take the bore plus just this one right here. That's the one we just made with the with the regular catwalks or whatever they're called. Um, I don't know if I actually need to give it fuel, but let's fuel it. 
And let's go ahead and take this for a spin so you guys can see it in action. And let me turn off the center of mass. Um, now, what I like to do is, I wanted to show you this first, is when I drive around across country, I turn, whoops, other way around. I leave and turn off the rear. So this whole ship kind of angles up, right? So the drills don't get stuck on anything. Now check this out. If we, we can go full speed at this uh, this mountain and the drills are not going to get stuck on anything. Check it out. Because the, the rear hovers are off, it will just make its way up over all kinds of rough terrain. I mean, an Omicron with the canyon and so on, I'm pretty sure you're going to have problems. But that's why you do have the hover boosters underneath. You can also use those. Um, but let's go ahead and there's no ore deposits on this planet actually because it's a creative world that I say um, don't... What's the thing that's a setting? Don't generate... It's an empty world. That's what it's called. Okay, but let's just take this area right here and let's go into drill mode. Meaning I want to drill down first, so I'm going to turn off the hover front. And I am actually going to show you this from the side. And let's scroll out a little bit. And now if I just want to drill down, straight down, okay, I can just, it will go all the way in a second here. And it's because the terrain in front of me is a little bit taller. It takes a second, but it will go 90 degrees all the way down, which is really cool. Running out of fingers. Oops. Ah, I let go of the button. Okay. Let's just do it in the normal mode here. Let's do this way. It's much faster with the mouse. And I can drill straight down if I want to, to get to the ore deposit, if I don't want to angle down or anything, right? And then, of course, when you're down here, and let's say you hit the ore deposit, and you guys see, I'm going to turn the lights off because it is so bright. <laughs> the ship. I probably should change this. I'm going to turn off the hover's front again. And now we can simply start digging into the ore deposit. And you guys are going to see, you see, it just stays the way you have it. It does not tilt. But now... Okay, I'm getting a little bit too deep. You know, I would not want to... I want to kind of shave it up here, right? What you can simply do then is turn off the hover rear. So now it's very easy to point it upwards, right? So now I can shave the top layer of this deposit without any problems. Just like that. And you see it stays very stable and everything. Um, it barely ever tilts around. Uh, besides, I mean, it's, it's still going to tilt, okay? Because you don't completely 100% cleanly dig out a floor and then let's like, say okay I'm done with the top part we can simply switch again turn off the rear turn off the front and keep digging down this entire deposit without any problems whatsoever and also let me show you the front view here it's also quite easy to see even with this cockpit of where you're digging it's no problem at all with the lights on you can see everything smoke doesn't or the the dust here doesn't really bother you nothing so I'm very happy how this turned out. This is exactly a ship that I wanted. Um, now let's test real quick. You see how easy it is to turn around here as well. Um, no problem at all. And when you turn on, let's say, turn these on again and turn these off. And we can simply climb out of this hole without having to drill. Done. Even though this was a straight up hole. Let me show you from here. I had no problems climbing out of this. So I'm very pleased how this HV turned out, and I hope you guys are going to download it from the Steam Workshop and give it a spin. And I am definitely going to bring this into my um, uh, survival series here on my Let's Play series, and that's going to be my hover vessel. And I just wanted to make a quick tutorial video on what were the reasoning for the hover alignment, the drills, and hopefully I was able to show you a couple tricks that you didn't know about, and I'll catch you in the next regular episode. Take care, stay safe, and bye-bye.